Well, you're ready for your big western hunt. You've got your rifle zeroed. You know your trajectory curves. You're deadly out to four, five, even 600 yards. You get out west. You're at altitude. It starts to snow. The temperature plummets. What's that going to do to your trajectory? Let's see if we can't figure it out on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Well, as so often happens after a big snowstorm, the skies have cleared and the temperature has plummeted. It's about zero degrees this morning. Now, the sun has been up for a bit and it's starting to warm, so we're at around 10 degrees now. But we're also at 5,350 feet elevation. Those in combination should change the trajectory of the bullet that I tested at about 1,000 feet in elevation at about 60 to 70 degrees. What will those changes do to our trajectory? Well, I've got a range-finding binocular here, and I've got a target way up on that hill, and I think it's about 450 yards away. Let me hit it. Yep. 456. So 456-yard target gives us pretty good distance at which to see any change in the drop on our trajectories. So I'm shooting my 22-250 AI 75 grain Burger VLD bullet, 3,350 feet per second. So I'm going to use the same holds as I would under normal conditions, warmer conditions, at 1,000 feet in elevation. So that should be about a three to three and a quarter minutes hold. So I'm dropping around 15 inches normally. Let's see if this changes on that 18 inch target out there. Gosh, got a hit. Got a hit. Doesn't seem to be that much difference. But really, until you extend that range even farther, you might not notice it. Let's look at some ballistic tables and charts and see if we can't figure out just how much of a concern these colder temperatures and higher elevations would be. For instance, if we decided to go on a sheep hunt up in Alaska at elevation or even worse, Colorado. Yeah, elk hunting at 10,000 feet is no, no stretch of the imagination in a high country like Colorado Rockies. So let's go check some ballistic comparisons and just see what this stuff all amounts to. So as you could see out there, when I shot in the cold and at that high altitude, I still hit my target 456 yards away. But you notice I did hit a little bit high and that suggests the very topic that one of my patrons on Patreon asked about some time ago. And that was, I'm coming out west, I'm probably going to be hunting pretty high in Colorado What's that going to do to my trajectory? Does the change in altitude really change our trajectory? Um, and then subsequent to that was cold temperatures. If it's late in the season and it's going to get really cold, what is that going to do? So I thought that would be worth looking into and I did some ballistics and made up some charts. But before we get into those, the bottom line is that yes, it does change your trajectory. How much? That's the critical question. Now, if you go up in altitude, you're going to change because the air is getting thinner. I mean, there are two things that happen when you set a projectile down range. It's going to, of course, have gravity pulling it down, but it's going to have air drag slowing it down. That's the critical part. We can always count on gravity to pull at 32 feet per second per second. But boy, uh, the thinning of the atmosphere changes things. And as everyone knows, if you go up, you get thinner air. There you've got reduced drag. So your bullet's not gonna drag as much. It's not gonna lose its energy and velocity. That means it's going to strike higher, but it's also not going to be deflected as much in winds because there's not as much drag from the atmosphere. So when I make my charts, sure enough, they prove just that. So let's look at those charts and see just what altitude does for getting temperature. So what I've done, I was shooting a 22-250 Acme Improved with a 75 grain Burger VLD bullet. Real high ballistics coefficient. Look on our chart and as a G7 BC, which is a lower number, but more accurate, it's a 0.271. So that's consistent. The velocity, 3,350 feet per second. That's going to be consistent. 
And so is the zero. Everything's the same as I had set up at sea level, but we're going to go up in altitude. Then we're going to see what the differences are. Now, the quickest way to see this is just jump right down to 800. And at 800 yards, when the temperature is 10 degrees, but our altitude is sea level, zero altitude, we are dropping 97 inches. Jump over to the 10,000 foot elevation chart and look at that, 80 inches, hmm. 17 inches drop difference. But what about the windage? Well, sea level, the wind is gonna deflect that bullet, 10 mile an hour, right angle wind, deflects that bullet 40 inches, up there at altitude, only 25 inches, almost cuts it in half. That's pretty important stuff, but that's at 800 yards. And I don't recommend anyone engage game at 800 yards. Let's get a little more reasonable and step down to 400 yards, which a lot of hunters think is awfully darn far to be risking a shot anyway. But if you practice, you know your trajectories and all the rest of it, those shots can be made. What are the differences? Well, we're looking at two inches of drop difference. Yeah, you just get two inches less at that altitude, 10,000 feet. And the uh, windage, six inches versus nine inches, three inches of difference. So what does that suggest to me? For most, most of my hunting and the style at which I hunt, I probably don't need to worry about trajectory changes at altitude. Very on, not very often that I hunt at 10,000 feet anyway. I, right out here, we were at 5,350 feet. So that's probably going to cut those differences in half, I would guess. But the thing to do, of course, is to run those ballistic charts. When you're home, wherever that is, figure out what your altitude is, run a ballistic chart at that, and then probably anticipate the temperature because we're gonna see some changes happening with the temperature too. But the good news is that's not that much of a difference unless you're really reaching out there. Now, if you're target shooting and you wanna score, you better do your homework because there's gonna be a big difference. Now let's see what differences result from temperature change alone. Now we're not gonna worry about altitude. So we're down here at sea level on both of these, but we're gonna move our temperature from 90 degrees, which is a lot of times what you're building your loads at or testing in the summer. And we're gonna drop down to that 10 degree temperature. 10 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty darn cold. Not a lot of us hunt in much more cold than that. What kind of a difference is that going to make? Well, same load again. Go to 800 yards to see the major difference. 97 inches of drop when you're at 10 degrees, only 91 at 90 degrees. Wait a minute, there's less? What's going on with this cold temperature stuff? I mean, when I go out in the cold and I smell that brisk clean air, it feels to me as if the atmosphere is less dense, but in reality, it's more dense. I mean, just think of boiling water. It's a pretty dense subject, right? Well, once you start it boiling, it turns to steam, and that has uh, fewer molecules condensed, right? That's what's going on with cold temperature. Cold temperature actually makes the air more dense. Heat makes it expand, and it's less dense. So there you've got a whole difference. There's just the opposite of altitude. Now, here's the thing. When you go up in altitude, your temperature changes. On a cloudy day, they say it averages about 3.4 degrees in Fahrenheit for every thousand feet you go up. On a clear sunny day, it's more like five and a half, 5.4 degrees in temperature change. That's pretty significant. Now let's look at some numbers on our chart when we stick with the same day, and let's say it's 90 degrees down at sea level, and we're gonna go up to 10,000 to hunt. Same temperature down at the base of the mountain, we get to the top, how's it going to change? Well, from zero to 10,000, you've got a sunny day, 5.4, you're looking at 54 degrees in temperature change. So 90 degrees down there at sea level, you're gonna be about 36 degrees up on top of that mountain at 10,000 feet. What's the difference going to be there? Once again, at 800 yards, you're looking at 91 inches of drop, and up on that mountain, it's only 79 inches of drop. Wow, big difference. So what does all this mean? The good news is that the two seem to cancel each other out. Even though you're getting less air, so your bullets fly higher at altitude, you're generally going to be a little cooler up there, and that has the opposite effect, and they 
they just tend to balance out a little bit. So again, we're going to go to our 400 yard and sure enough, there's only an inch drop difference between those two extremes. And in windage, you're looking at five inches versus eight inches, three inches difference. Once again, if you're a hunter who tries to get as close as possible, stay inside of 400 yards and you really don't have to worry about either one of these, altitude or temperature. So keep them in mind, keep studying those ballistic charts. And of course, anytime you're loading and you've got a choice for a high ballistics coefficient bullet, that always reduces all of these different number changes. You're gonna maximize your trajectory, minimize your drops, minimize your wind deflection, and maximize retained energy with higher ballistics coefficient bullets, just because there's less drag with those bullets. That's about all I can tell you for now on temperature and altitude. It's not as big a deal as a lot of people make it out to be. But once again, if you're doing this long, long range target shooting, yeah, then it's big. 10, 12, 14 inches of difference in drop and, and windage, then that's a big deal for target shooting. So you're gonna have to really put on your thinking cap, do your trajectory charts and study if you're a target shooter. Until next time, this is Ron Spomer thanking you. I invite you to subscribe to our channel and our Patreon members are always welcome and we really appreciate the support you give us to help us make these videos. And oh, my friend here you might be interested in, I want to put a plug in for uh, Tony McLean, an individual in town here who does these European mounts. I think he does an outstanding job. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty impressive deer I took in Nebraska last year. You can't leave a, a heavy duty rack like that behind. This guy was so old, I didn't age him, I have him aged by a biologist, but we guesstimated he was probably six or more just because of his mass and bulk and the fact that he wasn't even rutting anymore. There were younger bucks chasing does all around the area and this guy comes sidling in from the brush, gets out to that feed field and he is not involved at all. His hocks weren't stained, just, looked to us like he had just opted out of the rut like an old man. He was pretty much done, but boy, he can still grow some pretty impressive antlers, can't he? Mm-hmm. Use that new 6.8 Westerner to take him. First time I ever shot at game and hunted with that, and that was my reward. I feel pretty blessed to have gotten it. Hey, this is Ron Spomer signing off with the usual hunt, honest, and shoot straight.